my name is James. I come from the University of uh, Singapore University of Social Sciences. Uh, let me just move the screen a little bit because I can't. Uh, Yep, thank you. Now, uh, so the, the title of this talk is actually uh, on a data visualization tool that I have developed to help my students to plan their study. Okay. Um, so this is just really a, a quick uh, overview of what I am going to cover. Um, later on, there will be actually some demonstration uh, using the Microsoft Excel. Uh, what I plan to do is to run through all the slides uh, and then I go to Excel and then from there, I will close the presentation. Uh, I think it works easy, uh, better this way. Okay, so just a little bit about uh, what this tool is about. It's actually a tool uh, that I use to guide my students uh, to plan their study. And um, I think it's actually a new way of uh, doing things because uh, at the moment, uh, when we actually advise our students in the university to plan their study, uh, it tends to be, uh, we tend to give very general advice and I'm actually not very happy with that. I, I would prefer to tell students exactly what they should do in terms of, you know, uh, what kind of uh, grade they should be targeting and how many uh, modules that, that they should be taking in order for them to reach their, their, their goal. And so that's, that's basically the, the idea behind uh, this, this piece of work. Um, so you see, I, I come from a university where we actually have two groups of students. Um, the first small group of students, these are very young students uh, just finishing their um, a levels, so to speak, uh, high school, and they, they come to the university without uh, any work experience. And these are the full time students, they spend all the time in the campus to study. But we actually have a large group of students. Uh, it's actually very similar to the open university where these students are working adults. So they work in the daytime. Uh, and they can't come in the evening to study. And uh, I find that some of these students, uh, when they come to the university, um, they do not actually realize how much time they need to spend uh, to study for a degree. And what happens is that after a while, or in fact, you, usually the first semester, they realize that they get themselves into trouble. They, they, you know, they are, their results are not very good. And then um, they are at risk of being uh, terminated because of the poor result they got. Uh, so there's a need for me and my colleagues to give them very specific advice about how they should actually plan their study, right? How many modules they should take in the next semester and what kind of uh, grade point average they, they should be targeting so that they can actually avert, you know, maybe academic warning or termination. And uh, I also find that this tool can actually be extended to advise uh, better performing students as well. And I'm, I will show you how. Um, so to be honest, we, we actually started with, uh, fix, with the idea of uh, trying to fix the problem over here. But since I'm coming here for a conference to share these ideas with you, uh, I think I better put in some uh, works that other people have been doing as well uh, to, you know, um, sort of like uh, see how all this actually fit into uh, what people have been doing. And I know today uh, there are many educators around and I really hope that uh, there could be some advice given to me that how I can, you know, uh, be better informed of how, what, of what I'm doing right now is actually uh, useful and relevant to what other scholars have been doing. Uh, so here are just really some of the work that people have been doing uh, to, you know, uh, to think about how they can actually help students to better prepare for their study. And like, for example, Genshi Fu, uh, you know, mentioned that uh, students who actually do not, uh, students who actually do not do well in their first semester, right? 
uh, they tend to actually face academic termination. And, and this is actually something that I observe uh, in my own university as well. When students you know, come into the university, they don't prepare themselves very well. They get into trouble in the first semester. They, are, they got a very low CGPA and that's really a critical point that we tell them exactly what to do so that they can actually avoid academic termination uh, in the subsequent semester. And of course, uh, some other work like uh, giving students their own the ownership, you know, to, to plan for their own study is, is also very important. And some of the study also suggests that, you know, if you develop your intervention measure from some uh, visualization results, it can actually be more effective in helping students to avoid termination as well. So these are some of the works that we have actually seen and sort of like reinforced uh, to, to give us the assurance that what we are doing right now is actually uh, is, uh, effective. So I would like to share a little bit about um, the terminologies that I'm going to use later on so that we are uh, not, not too confused. So in my university, uh, we actually award uh, grades you know, in, in, in this manner. So there are different range of uh, scores and starting from A plus all the way to F. And I have uh, the last three rows over here, highlighting to you that they are all in red forms. Uh, basically, if a student score any marks below 50, right, they are at risk of being terminated, right? So if a student has a good point average of, uh, let's say 1.7, uh, for the very first time in a semester, the student will actually get a warning and if in the subsequent semester, any time in any of the subsequent semester, the, the, the CGPA go below two again, then the student will be terminated. Yeah, and this is quite devastating for a student if he has already spent quite a bit of money and time to study for a degree. And this is actually where we are trying to uh, avoid. Uh, now, uh, so Sorry, I, I just want to uh, highlight that this is actually what we call the grade point value that is associated with uh, different grades. And this will actually be a number that we actually use to compute the group point average. Uh, so I am making some simplifying assumption over here uh, for the purpose of this presentation. Uh, actually, in my university, things are a little bit more complex but I just want to keep it simple by saying that, you know, over here, we just assume that every module is actually five credit units. And in my university, uh, if it's a part-time degree, the student will need to complete 130 credit units of study, right? And because of my simplifying assumption, I'm saying that the grade point average is really just simply an average of all the grade point values of the various uh, modules. So here is an example, let's say um, I have taken uh, three modules and I have a grade point average of, uh, sorry, uh, grade point values of four, 3.5 and five. So I have uh, 10 different uh, grades for the three modules. Then of course my GPA or grade point average will be just the average of all the numbers, which is 3.5. Now, so let's extend this uh, grade point average a little bit more. Um, let's say if I'm talking about right now, I am in the semester J, perhaps, you know, I am in my third semester. So J is equal to three. Therefore, my uh, CGPA for the current semester will then be uh, uh, CGPA three, all right? And then uh, if let's say I am planning to take up uh, some modules in semester four, then the semester C GPA, uh, sorry, semester GPA for the semester four will be denoted as this uh, SGPA uh, four. Okay. Now, so here I actually have a formula for the, uh, sorry, I, oh, I think the, there's a little bit of uh, <laughs> offset with the formula over here. Um, uh, I think it has actually read around <laughs> to the next uh, line. But uh, maybe I'll just put it very simply. It's really just, you know, um, uh, the CGPA 
um, that I will have in my new semester is really just a combination of the CGPA that I have attained up to this uh, current semester J plus, you know, the semester GPA of the upcoming semester. Just think of it this way and it's just all weighted according to the uh, credit units that I am taking in uh, over the semesters. Okay, so don't worry about the formula over here. Um, okay, now, so here is really just a layout of how it looks like for the uh, visualization tool that I am using. Right, so that you see you, you see a big box over here and in, indeed later on, you will see how this is being shown on the Excel spreadsheet that is actually com it comprises of many values over here. And all the values on this, on this table over here will be just projected uh, CGPA in the upcoming semester, which is J plus one, all right? And along the horizontal axis over here, this will represent the number of uh, credit units that I have completed, right, as a student. So at different stages of my study, I would have accumulated um, a certain number of credit units. So this one represents the uh, credit units up to semester J, and I will show you how to use that. And then, um, over here, the vertical axis actually shows the uh, semestral uh, GPA for the upcoming semester J plus one, all right? And this is usually um, the axis that I actually look at to decide, you know, what is the kind of uh, uh, target that I need to achieve in order to attain a certain uh, CGPA in the new semester, right? And uh, Apart from all these numbers, I also need to tell the soft, uh, the spreadsheet, you know, what is the CGPA that I have achieved up to the current semester J and how many credit units I intend to take in the new semester, right? And I, I want to give uh, attribution to this person called Jack. Actually, he has developed a, a grid called the early retirement grid. And I have to tell you that, you know, this tool was actually inspired from him, from his work. Um, he, he, this is really just uh, not any kind of research work that he's doing, but he's really uh, just uh, having a, a web page and sharing all kinds of uh, financial uh, planning tools. Okay, and this is actually inspired from his work. Now I'm going to um, demonstrate four cases in which people can actually use the Excel spreadsheet. So I'll just run through the four cases uh, very quickly, right? And later on, I will show you how this is being done with the Excel spreadsheet that I have. Now, so the first case is that uh, James, a student has completed 12 modules, which is equivalent to 60 credit units, right? 12 times five, that's 60 in semester J, which is the current semester and he has attained a CGPA for the current semester of 2.77, right? And so James is telling himself you know, that he is going to take two modules in the new semester. And then, you know, if he has some idea that, you know, he wants to achieve a CGPA that is above three, then what should be his uh, new semester GPA, right? So that's the that's the question that he has. And the answer for, for this is actually, it should be uh, at least uh, 4.5 and above, okay. But assume that he, he, he now decides to, you know, take maybe four modules, which is 20 CU, right? Then the expectation will actually be lower, right? That his uh, new semester GPA, right, will actually now be reduced to 3.7. And I will show you how this is being determined using the spreadsheet. But what I want to highlight over here is that you can see that there is actually a trade-off between uh, study load and the expected performance. Now, at a certain point in my study, if I want to move my uh, CGPA up, right, like in this case is 2.33, right, if I want to move it up, to uh, let's say at least three. Um, if I'm taking less modules, I will need a little bit more effort. I will need a better result in order to move it up. But if I actually take a little bit more more modules, then um, 
I don't actually have to get equally good result. I can actually expect to have a lower performance, right? Because that will still be able to move my CGPA up. Um, so to our part-time students, this is really a, a little bit of struggle because um, if I take more modules, I will need more time and effort, right? But if I take less modules, I will have a little bit more time to study. But at the same time, I will actually have to work harder in order to achieve my academic goal. Right. So this is the first uh, demo case that I will show you later. The second case is more like an average student and this student has completed 18 modules, uh, which is 90 CU of study. And now his CGPA is actually below two. And when the CGPA is below two, right, the student will get uh, a warning. And let's say this student say, okay, I am very, very busy in the upcoming semester because I'm working and study at the same time. I want to take one module. Now, what should be the result that I need to target in order to prevent myself from getting terminated? And using the grid, we can determine that the answer is actually 3.5. Okay, if I just want to take one want to take one module. But if I take three modules, which is 15 CU, then I can actually, uh, you know, save myself from being terminated by attaining a score of 2.5 and above for the semester GPA. Okay, so this is the second case. Now, this is the third case that now is, I'm in the exact same situation. It's just that instead of 1.92, now my CGPA is 1.8. And I'm telling myself that, you know, I'm very busy. I can only take one module. But using the, the, the grid or the, the visualization, I can actually determine that if I'm going to just take one module, I will never be able to make it. I'm going to get terminated because there's no way that I can actually move my CGPA above two. Right. But if I take three modules, then, you know, to save myself, I will need to attain a CGPA. Uh, semester GPA of 3.25, okay? And this is the last case, uh, you know, uh, maybe I've gone through too many cases already that we are all maybe a little bit confused. So I will just save this uh, first. And maybe when we go to the uh, Excel spreadsheet, if we have a little bit of time, right? We can actually talk about this as well. And I'll just do a little bit of concluding remark before I, you know, switch to the Excel spreadsheet. Um, so my personal experience with this uh, spreadsheet is that it actually allows me to answer quite a few what if questions uh, and be, be, be able to better advise my student uh, what to do exactly. Uh, so I just don't want to tell them, you know, study harder, uh, do a little bit more do better time management and things like that. I really want to give them something that is more specific, what they can do with their study and how they can actually prevent something bad from occurring to them. Okay. So I, I would like to, um, in the interest of time, I just want to, you know, uh, share screen again about the spreadsheet that I'm using. I hope you can see this. Now, so this is actually the first case that I was talking about just now. That um, I have this um, student James, right? Completed 12 modules, which is 60 CU in semester J and having a CGPA of 2.77. So this is where I key in the current semester CGPA. And let's say if I'm planning to take uh, 10 CU or two modules of courses, then, you know, um, because I have already attained um, 60 CU of study, right? And because I'm planning to take 10 CU of uh, modules, sorry. <laughs> I keep using the word courses because that's what we, that's the terminology we use in our university. But apparently if I say courses, you might get confused. So it's 10 is two modules, okay, two modules that I'm going to take. And you can see that in order for me to move to my target of uh, three for my, for my, you know, uh, for my uh, CGPA in the new semester, this is three, where three is, and I will need to actually, uh, 
attain a semester GPA of uh, 4.5. Okay, that, so that's uh, quite a tall order because if I take two courses, I have to make sure that I get the best grades. All right, but if I plan to take 20 CUs, right, and now in order to move my CGPA to be at least uh, three and above, right, I only need to get a grade of B, which is about 3.7 and above. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, but I think it's huh. time for the next presentation. Can you wrap up very quickly? I can't hear you. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. I'll just go very quickly then. So this is actually the second case. Um, we actually have a student who is actually at risk. And then, you know, again, I can change, put in the different types of uh, CU, and then the student can actually use the um, semester's GPA to determine, you know, uh, where they should actually go to. And likewise for case three and four. All right. So that's all I have. Uh, if you are interested in this, uh, please contact me and then, you know, we can actually uh, maybe explore more work together. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.